Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is part two of the two part series block wall build. In this one we're gonna show actually erecting the blocks and grouting the blocks. In other words, getting the final on the inspection. Here we are unloading a pallet of uh, the 6618 slump stone. I brought in a second generation block setting crew I've known for about 30 years. We're going to be using colored mortar. This mortar matches the block, which makes the, uh, your joints a lot more forgiving and your cleanup as well. So they've already got the mud on the head joints. The blocks are all standing in a certain direction. So there's a top and bottom of the blocks and you can see here that the bottoms are all pointing towards the left. So when they grab them and drop them, you have the smooth side on top every time. These joints are going to be raked and brushed. So we're not going to use a cove tool on them and smooth them out. We're just going to rake them a little and brush them. That bottom block will be left open on the head joints just for water to uh, migrate. The nice thing about setting slump zone is um, there's no straight edges on them. They're very irregular. So even with a line, you can't really follow it. You could do an offset line and just get it close, but there's really, you can't put a line on these. So all of our vertical rebar is half inch and we have them spaced at 36 inch centers. There will be, there is one horizontal rebar in the footing and there's going to be one more horizontal on the top course bond beam. And then we'll have a solid cap on top of that. So you can see right here as it's coming up, we're staying, the, the actual courses are staying at about the same level as the existing block wall. But that's going to get off as you go up because the grout joints that they did on that original build were very thin, as thin as a quarter inch in some areas. So as we maintain a normal 3 eighths joint, we're going to be um, picking up some ground as we go up to, to height. Now we cut some of the pool deck out on both sides just to get the footing in and then after the uh, wall is completely built we'll go ahead and mix some concrete up and fill in all the blank spots on both sides of the wall. This wall went up in one day. Um, that's not including the foundation or the first course. However, um, the other 12 courses were completed in one day. And it was 77 feet long and that includes, no, no, 82 feet, including, that includes the return back to the gate, 82 feet. One day, 12 courses, looks like we did pretty well on that. The only step left to do after that day would be to grout and then put your solid cap on top, which is another three hour process. 
and a wall this size where you're grouting just where your steel occurs in other words your verticals every 36 you would grout that cell and then of course the whole top bond beam for your horizontal we used approximately a yard and three quarters of concrete all hand mixed now here's what I was talking about on your finish brushing your joints and that's a wire brush you just don't want to hit the block too hard otherwise you're gonna scratch it which is okay because it's gonna lighten up any anyway in time you can see some of the light spots on the block that's how it will all look over time you can see that this block here since it's new and it's more fresh it's darker than the back wall even though they are the same colors and that's how color concrete lightens So these aren't your real standard block size. These are 18 inch long. Typically you'd use, um, you'd see more of 16 inch, eight high, six wides. This is actually a six, six, 18. And it was difficult to find the actual block. The manufacturer didn't have any in stock, but some of the suppliers still had a few in different locations. So I was able to gather enough to complete this job without waiting for two months before they made more. This block manufacturer is called Orco in Stanton. The suppliers that um, carry them and distribute for Orco, uh, resource being one of them, which had a, uh, seven pallets in a few different locations that I had to drive to to pick up. But I think there was one pallet left in the local area when, after I got done here. So that's your steel, that's your two feet, actually about two and a half. So you know your laps there when you add your next vertical, which will drop in from the top once we get to full height. And then in order to hold that, we'll just tie the, tie the rebar on to the top uh, horizontal, the verticals will tie off. To the horizontal at top and then the rebar that's dropped down in there will hang plumb because that's how plumb bobs work if you tie to the top and it's loose at the bottom it naturally hangs plumb just due to the nature of uh, where we live that's how it works with gravity There's your coal, was that the coal joint there? Yeah, there's your coal joint right there. You see that gap in the block straight down. Basically what that is, it's two verticals on each side of that coal joint there. And that, the purpose of that is for crack control. So whenever you have a distance over uh, 60 feet, they require um, a cold joint and that's what it consists of that fire pit you see there a um, little weathered and worn that's gonna get um, stuccoed we're gonna throw a brown coat on that and I believe I think they're gonna paint it later we'll get rid of all those cracks and, and make it a little bit more presentable Well, it happened to be raining this day off and on. Not enough to shut us down. Just enough to keep us cool. The 
there's your scaffolding set up this is a father and a two son team here that's where you get the second generation block layer set up The key to any job is teamwork or any any in sports or anything you do. It's always going to be teamwork. And you can tell that this team um, has a really good system. little touch-ups with the grout bag here and there maybe re got a little too recessed on some of those joints it's like decorating a cake there's your seven and a quarter on a right angle grinder kind of scary operating those but they work really well There you are. You see how the, how much different the height of the block in the rear wall is now. That we're at full height because of the grout spacing differential, different builders. That's your grout stop there, and that prevents the concrete from dropping out off out of that horizontal bond beam into every cell. So you only poke holes in the cells where the steel is. That way you get a solid uh, bond beam across the top. And then you have the concrete drop in all those verticals. Looks like the rain's coming down pretty hard now and the block is wet. Good thing we use color grout. In case it started to run, it wouldn't affect the block. Or color mortar, I should say. This is a beautiful wall, no doubt about it. There's that bomb beam I was talking about, and you can see the grout stop right beneath it. Now you'll poke some holes where your verts are and drop them down, tie off the top, and fill it up as soon as you get inspection, of course. What'll happen now is you're going to get your second inspection and that's the pre-grout inspection you had the foundation inspection now you get your pre-grout um, inspection so the sparrow will come by look in all the cells make sure the steel is centered um, make sure it's at every 36 and it's full depth and once that gets signed off you're good to grout and cap and then one more inspection that's the final Now, the inspector, how they can tell whether or not it's been grouted or not, is uh, you can tap on the block. Also, sometimes you can still see moisture bleeding through the block from the cells that were grouted, depending on uh, how soon he gets there after it was grouted.
or her. So there's the pool deck and now we're going to um, continue on through. Now this particular pool deck um, it was all hand tooled and they did it about five foot sections on a 45 degree angle. And uh, boy, oh boy, let me tell you, those joints are so crooked. Uh, that's why I like saw cutting because you, you never have a crooked joint. And we put the stepping stones back in and that's where the trash can set right down there. Reorganized the gravel. Cleaned everything up the back wall, the pool equipment. And now the good news is that temporary cable there can be abandoned because we've got a new underground conduit. There's your enclosure. will help with the sound from the equipment and the visual of it. We filled in both sides of the pool equipment wall as well with concrete at the base. There's your cap block solid on top. There's your fire pit. Oh man, I just missed that. But yeah, the fire pit was stuccoed and looks a lot cleaner, modernized. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned um, for the next video as we keep rolling out the good stuff. Only the good stuff because there's, never, there's really never any bad stuff that I do. But thanks. Have a good day. Talk to you later.